10 minutes running 10 minutes late right so what what time is it progress i'd like to welcome everybody to the may edition of the tips and tricks sig our typical format is open forum all night long (laughs) and we can go through uh, the uh Topics that I sent out to everybody and see if there's a desire, something in there they desire for us to cover or whatever else you guys come up with. So uh, that being said, I'd like to say anyone have any questions they'd like to propose to the group? One quick question. I like quick. what time is it locally where you got where you are, Stanford? Seven, seven eleven right now. OK, seven oh nine, actually. Yeah, eight ten here, which is Eastern. And you are what time there, Pete? Two o nine. Two o nine. Two o nine, Hawaii. You know, <laughs> that's. You remember when gas was two o nine? No, oh, I remember, remember when it was under under fifty cents a gallon. Well, that's besides the point. I'm talking about two o nine. Yeah, that was what ten years ago. It was a couple of different times, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, how is my signal coming through over there? Very okay. well. You're good. I'm going to come back. I'm done with dinner. Okay, good thing. <laughs> nice to see you. Bye. <laughs> so you just finished having dinner, and Pete's thinking about an afternoon snack. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you summer, a lot of pineapple while you're out there. No, no. Coconuts. Coconuts are dry. Are dry. <laughs> At least the yeah. is. Yeah. Sugar cane. You get a lot of sugar. You grow a lot of sugar cane there. No, most of the sugar cane's gone. Oh. That's been gone for a while because uh, the the new natives were didn't like the smoke from them burning it. So so now we have fruit plantations. Uh, there's a lot of lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits, and stuff like that taking their place, which is less is easier on the atmosphere for the people. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, those were those were some quick questions. Uh, wait, where's Earl? <laughs> I'm here. Oh, okay. He's there you are. <laughs> Just making sure you still know you're still there, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any, anyone else have any questions for the group or problems? Everyone's computers are running so smoothly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that being said, uh, had anyone thought about buying besides Burke? Anyone else thought about buying a new PC lately? No. Okay. Well, that was a quick discussion. Okay. It's uh, it's on my menu. And what I'm thinking is maybe going to a mini computer. You know, right now I have a all-in-one desktop, a 24-incher. But uh, probably a mini computer is what I'm interested in to sort of do some research on. Okay. Like just a, a mini means small format? Uh, yes, like, you know, six inches square. Oh, you mean uh, similar to the NUC that I have and the last previous? I would recommend against a NUC as a an everyday workhorse because they tend to run hot. Yeah. And after after prolonged use, they get so hot that either the fan revs a lot or they have premature failures. Okay, good to know. Is that because they just don't design them with enough airflow, or they're putting too high of processors? Or it's so cramped, and yeah. uh, uh, the faster you try and run it, like say you got an uh, uh, i five or i seven processor, right, and the NVMe <laughs> and sixteen uh, or thirty two gigs of memory, you're talking a lot of heat. And only uh, the uh, CPU fan uh, uh, really to help ventilate that heat. 
Are they using full size processors or mobile mobile based? M processors. They are, they are M processors. They're core so, M or M at least in mine. So right. M processors do run at a lower temperature threshold and, and wattage. Yeah, so but once it, once you get past about uh tenth gen Intel uh -huh. or comparable uh, AMD like a Threadripper, you're uh, talking about something that even if it's made for a laptop, that laptop would run hot as hell too. Yes, <laughs> and uh, 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 if you got NVMe uh, 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 memory uh, storage. Uh, the faster uh, it runs, uh, in other words, uh, 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 PCIe 4 spec or PCIe 5 spec, uh, they generate a lot of heat. And a, a lot of people are saying with PCIe 5 spec, you may actually have to have liquid cooling on the damn thing. I just saw an article recommending it. Yes, and uh, PCI 4 spec, it's going to generate a hell of a lot of heat just from that one little device. Add in uh, uh, your uh, 16 or uh, 32 gigs of memory. The heat that is processed uh, uh, from the uh, CPU uh, itself and only one little fan trying to ventilate the whole thing, forget it. All right. So now that we, you know, really gave Eldo a bad taste in his mouth about <laughs> Oh. Buying a mini PC, I think we we jumped on him. <laughs> Poor guy, Aldo. May I ask, what were you thinking of using this PC for? Uh, basically, daily I do finances, uh, mm -hmm. internet, read manuals. Not so much social. Okay. You know, uh, the club here is probably one of the few socials that I do. Uh, yeah, news. So, so does that PC actually move or does it just stay in your office? It's uh, right, well, it stays, it's put, it's on my desk, does not move. It's a 24 inch all in one, Hewlett Packard. I think like, you know, eight to eight well, you might, What you might look look at is a, a small fat form factor CPU in a separate monitor right yeah because as you get older you want to have that monitor bigger so your text gets bigger not only that but uh, uh you're all in one an all in one the motherboard inside is from a laptop hmm. so you're really running a laptop inside of a uh, your monitor and uh, it just uh, communicates directly to that monitor. Whereas uh, uh, if you have a separate computer like a uh, SFF uh, format or smaller, but uh, uh, still larger than a NUX, uh, then yeah. uh, you have a, a system that'll have to have a separate monitor. And you can get them <laughs> all the way up to 32 inches and sometimes <laughs> uh bigger uh if you've got uh the money okay <laughs> so eldo have you set up a budget i said control p all right got it <laughs> eldo do you have a budget uh, uh you know not expensive but not cheap either well you know um I don't know. That's why I was kind of asking what you if you have been thinking about a budget. So budget, you know, you can get a lower end PC. Anyone know anything about these N processors that are out? The which one? The N. I d I'm trying to find one here. Oh, those are uh, uh, lower end uh, processors. They're like Pentiums. I right. Think. Isn't that what they use? Let's see what this might be one. Fanless. Yeah, if you get into fanless. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah this is the end. Pentium's N6005. Right, the Pentium. And uh, uh, sometimes you find Celeron. I think they. Uh, <laughs> there's also a G series besides the N series on Pentium. Right. By all of those are going to be relatively low performance. Yes. Yes. They're good but, for light work, but, and that's it. Well, you know, again, we're with 
with knowing what Eldo was looking to do with his machine yeah. would fit the bill. Right. Yeah, I'm not into graphics or videos. Um, well, you get, you know, get Intel graphics, so you, you could watch a movie on here without a problem. Um, I think it kind of was be what, um, you know, what are you doing in finance wise? And how uh, many tab, if, if you will, how many tabs are you going to have open that you're going to be monitoring? Like, are you doing stock trades and stuff and quick time? No, it's uh, basically housekeeping. I'm a bursar. So I got, I just uh, set something else up in Excel. It's got like 10 tabs for one. Okay. So I, I do. You know, this would work for you. It wouldn't necessarily be the top of my list. Anyone well, else? Well, with to... your 10 tabs, I would disagree. If he was talking uh, four to five tabs, it's a maybe. Okay. So and I the reason tabs, uh, has to do with uh, unless he puts uh, uh, the unused tabs to sleep, uh, he's going to be... Uh, uh, using a lot of that 16 gigs of memory okay. on a processor that uh, uh, doesn't have a lot of horses. All right. Yeah. El Eldo, are you using <laughs> tabs in Excel or on the, the uh, browser? It's on the uh, Excel, yeah. on browser. So now well, you're that doing... doesn't necessarily consume a lot of space. Uh, uh, the uh, spreadsheet, depending on what you're doing, can take up quite a bit of uh, power on a CPU. He yeah. could, but he could be able to look at this right now <laughs> or at some point. Run, go do a memory check. You know, open, um, what would someone say, open um, uh, task manager okay. and look at your memory usage before you open all the applications you use on your current machine, then open them all and see how much the difference is. Yeah, that'd be great. Right? That's a that's a good way. And I'll tell you, this is my impact. I think I think for what you're doing, if budget is a consideration, something along this line may work for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right now. Yeah, you know, I can probably go up a little bit higher, five to a thousand. Okay, that puts you in a whole different ballgame. Yeah, I think we're trying to to discuss here, or what, you know, go from what your low end options would be to what your higher end options would be. So, um, anyone want to comment? Uh, you know, you know the, the, the one at the end on the right, the Neo Smart, is a i five. Yeah. That brings it up to double the price, but it also uh, no the other side. I think he wanted. Oh, the oh, other side. The i5, right? The first yeah, this one. is an i5. Right. This was an i5. No, no, the opposite side. That's on me. Left side. This, yeah. Good. Okay. That's more of a desktop model. Right. And it should have better ventilation. Ah, yeah. Agreed. So oh, that. And it's an like 11th good. gen. It's got six uh, cores with uh, uh, hyper threading. It's got uh, uh, eight gigs of RAM. That's a little light, but I'm sure you can add memory to it. And and we're looking at today's prices versus when he's going to order it. Sure. Okay. Um, you know, this one's a little bigger than your six, your little format that you were going for the little square six inch units like a nook yeah but um, that's smaller than the normal sff <laughs> models sf sf uh models are bigger uh and these are all nuxes there you'd have to uh, uh probably do a search for uh sff models Ironically, spell that. Sam Frank Frank uh, CPUs or uh, computers. Small form factor. Factor. Yeah. 
Houston, there was one there. Thank you. Good leads. Now that's still well, in the nuts. The idea here. You're still in the nuts. Go down. Uh, down further. I don't know what this source is, but uh, uh, I've I've got uh, SSFs uh, as an example. Dell uh, uh, 3000, 5000, 7000, and 9000 series SSF uh, uh, models. Okay. Now, uh, uh, this I... one over here, 118. Now, that's cheap. Uh, uh, it's not what he wants, but that's, no, that, S... that's a rebuild, too. That's, that's an rebuild. SFF model. Go ahead. Share the screen what you found, Tim. I uh, haven't been looking. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, I was just on New Egg site and I'm just tooling around. This was just conversation on understood what his options were for a PC. That's nice. uh, let's see what today's best deals are. I don't know how many people shop at New Egg. One thing I can tell you is the Neos May brand <clears throat> is basically low end Chinese made. Intel Nook is European made and US based. So let's see if they got So there, there is a difference in the components. I'd really like to know what kind of a motherboard they've got in that Neos May. Look at that 20 terabyte Seagate drive for $289. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> so 20 terabytes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right. So that being said, thank you. Well, that was fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like uh, uh, right now, uh, uh, if you check out uh, Dell computers uh, for SFF models, uh, you get the 3000 series, which is the budget in. Then you got 5,000, 7,000, and 9,000 series. Uh, the uh, five is uh, kind of like general purpose, and seven and nine are for uh, like businesses. That's good. Okay. Uh, uh, that, was, that was fun. Uh, Dennis Leeds, as an example, uh, uh, who would <clears throat> attend some of the meetings, he's got a, a an older uh, Dell SFF Model 3050, and that's got good horsepower, but these days you want at least a 3070 or higher number uh, for more modern. I'll, I have the 3050 as well, and I find it very adequate well it depends on whether he wants to be able to run 11. if you want to run 11 you got to have an eighth gen processor or higher and I, I think you have to have model 3070 to get into an eighth gen processor if i remember right okay well that was not one of my requirements i understood you're on <laughs> linux yeah so eldo when you start doing the shopping you've got to tell us what you narrow this down to yeah, <laughs> okay, I will. When the time okay. comes. When the time comes. We're, we're always willing to spend your money. Yeah, I, one thing I would say is that Dell does make a line of mini PCs, and they vary in size. They aren't all this teeny tiny, and they're, I, there are intermediate sizes between that and an actual full tower. There are about four or five different sizes. Okay. And they vary in price. Partly according to size, you get more bang for your buck with a slightly larger form factor, and you don't have to go all the way up to a tower to see that difference. Right. Uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, I've got both full towers and SFF models, and as long as you're not going into high-end graphics, you uh, uh, should see little to no difference between the two as far as what you can uh, uh, get in performance and capability. I, 
You just have be, a, a any, little. Any of the PCs you buy today, newer ones, will be able to decode 4K video right. that you could get streaming. Right. So that really is not a, in terms of graphics, it's really not a problem. Right. Uh, graphics would come more in the play of gaming, you know, or doing some solid work stuff or something that's really intense. Or photo editing and stuff photo like editing. that. Yeah. Photo editing, more like video. How editing. about movie rendering? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> video, movie rendering is really where you see it, more so than photo. Uh, photo just gets delayed on how fast it takes to to uh, save something to the SSD or the hard drive. That's where your bottlenecks wind up. Um, but not in processing on photos, but on video, absolutely. Because you need a lot of RAM and you need a fast subsystem for just moving all that data around. Well, I also know that on the, like the Dell uh, 3050 and higher model, they have one NVMe slot that sits underneath uh, uh, the uh, drives, the regular drives, and you can stick uh, uh, in an NVMe drive to put the OS on, and that thing will be uh, blazing speed as far as the operating system and all your programs. <laughs> it's faster than using the SATA interface. Okay, I think we covered that subject from beginning to end and circled back around like 30 times. Uh, All right. I just wanted to know, Pete, did you ever get that kiosk to work? I've got one kiosk working, but some things got in the way, like I had to move apartments. Because I wasn't here last week, last month, because I was in the process of moving. Again? No. Uh, this is number three, isn't this? He's been a, 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 a evicted uh, uh, twice. Oh, okay. Well, that, hey, you stretched it out pretty good. So also, I uh, I sold my big machine. So <laughs> I moved. I've got to compress my shop now. I don't have to mm -hmm. move out of the shop. I just... Okay. Basically, change the lease. Going to change the lease so that they get half the the shop. Mm -hmm. What machine did you sell? The, the multi cam five foot by ten foot router. Okay, and mm -hmm. why'd you get rid of that one? I wasn't using it enough, and invested value and. It al would allow me to reduce my my overhead on the rent for the shop because it was using like uh, two thousand square foot. Wow! Just that much between machine? the between the machine, the compressor, the safety area, uh, storage for some of the materials and stuff like that. It used a whole lot of floor space and floor space here is about 10 times as expensive as it is in the Midwest. Oh. Okay. So did you sell it for a profit? No, it's going it's to cut, cut my rent from 6,000 to 3,000. So did you sell it for a profit? It was fully depreciated in the first business. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I will get the amount of money that I invested in it back. Okay, that, there you go. That's a great answer. And it's no small amount. And the guy, I, the business I sold it to is a great guy. And he's working together with me really well. So I will still be able to use the machine on occasion. Well, that's good. So uh, it's a win, 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 win for me. So, but it takes that stuff takes time, and now I got a clean shop, and <laughs> move, move a bunch of stuff. Right. So back to my question, I asked you, okay. were you able to get a kiosk going? And you said you got one going. Can you tell us how what what it does? So the the one I got going is basically a 
a music server. Okay. So a jukebox. Okay. And I, I work. I'll be working on some other ones. But that's uh, that's in the future when I finally really get some time. <clears throat> so I moved from short sea sea level height roughly to fifteen hundred feet. Fifteen hundred AGL. <laughs> what? Uh, above sea level? Yeah. So instead of having really warm, warm days in the desert, now the days are getting up to about 80 degrees and the nights are getting almost below zero here. Wow. <laughs> not, not your zero, Hawaii zero. <laughs> what does that mean, like 60? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're seeing 65, 60. Six at night with a really strong breeze. It's, it's 70 here. They start to put on the parkas. You know, in New England, at 70, we have a beach day. I understand that. <laughs> I, I can remember the first 65-degree day in Chicago area. You'd roll all the windows down on the car and go. Right. Except for the early well, morning, I know the, how it is today right now. All the windows are down, all everything's open, and it's <laughs> just below 70. So, yeah, okay. Exactly. Well, now we know you did get a kiosk going. Yeah. All right. So, anyone else have anything to add? If not, we can go to our topics tonight. Nope. Okay. I sent out a list of topics of things that we could discuss. Uh, do I need to repost this? I'm looking at it. Not for me. <laughs> All right, so please tell me what you guys would like to cover. Trying to get this thing to be. I think uh, 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 the fourth one down. Uh, what does uh, system restore uh, do on Windows? Because a lot of people don't understand it. Okay. Well, the, the topic about HTTPS should be understood. Okay. So first we're going to do what does system restore do in Windows? Look, they got Mario Brothers up there, just in case you need to see that. Well, that's to uh, entertain us. <laughs> All right. So they talk about it could be a solution for problems. Um, and there's a guide on how to do it. And what does it do? Uh, it creates a snapshot of your system. Um, does let me ask to is there anyone in this group who is unfamiliar with how, what system restore does? Or oh, okay, good. Everybody here knows what it does. Um, so I guess this is kind of we're talking here about doing restore points. Uh, Terry's coming in. Um, oh, may not be aware of what. System restore can and what it cannot restore. What parts of the system it really does work on. Okay. And what parts it won't work with. Or what situations it cannot correct. One of the things that's good that they tell you in here is that it, uh, um, it will remove any applications or drivers. Now, I say applications is a limited statement on yeah. what what applications are going to get removed but for the most part it's drivers that will that have been installed after that restore point so it's going to roll everything back to whenever that restore point was was created it will also undo a lot of but not every windows update that has been done since that time mm -hmm. 
So this article, they tell you how to set it up, how much storage space you might want to use, uh, and how to create them. You know, should you, uh, how frequently you should do it. I think every time an update comes through, uh, the system does create a restore point. Be careful. If you, Be careful. If you have restore system restore turned on. Be careful. Yeah. That. That's the key. There are some mm -hmm. cases where the uh, uh, <laughs> Windows restore point is being turned off. And you don't know it. You think you're being uh, 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 getting a restore point at the safety, and it may not be true. Correct. And this article tells you how to make sure you have it turned on, how you can do it from the command prompt. I don't know why you would want to do it this way, but you can uh, do go directly to the wizard. Maybe something's preventing you. That is, you bought a new PC. And if something's preventing you from turning on rest, uh, restore, you could set the wizard to run it on here. Um, if I recall, is system restore disabled on a new PC? Bert, you may know. No, you bought it. I'm not sure. Uh, these, day, these days in Windows 11, and actually in Windows 10, the newer five versions of it, it's off by default. It's off? And, yeah. Off by default, and if you turn it on, it only allows something like one percent or less of your uh, drive, and you'll probably want to increase that amount. Which was in this article, but to validate to uh, continue on that, mm -hmm. this article actually talks about it right here, where it says uh, you should at least what at least minimum of two percent of your disk space for restore points instead of the one percent. So, Bert, if yours is you, since yours is a relatively new machine, um, you may want to validate the fact that that is turned on, that feature. Yeah, because I have uh, run into a couple uh, times where I thought I was getting backups, and surprise, they weren't there yeah. with the, uh, um, the restore points. Yeah, and that's the, it's extremely valuable to, to have it, I think, to have it turned on. Why Windows does not have it turned on, I don't know by default. I, it's because in Windows 11, they are pushing people toward by uh, reinstalling or repair. They're pushing you to store your data on OneDrive in the cloud. And if anything goes wrong with your PC, you treat it like a phone. You just reset it. Yep, that's, that's what they want. And that does work if you're using a lot of store apps because yeah. about the only way to get those on messed up sometimes is a reset. Okay, so um, where were we on this? We talked about, you know, the 2% to allow for it, making sure you have it turned on, how to create them. I also, if you happen to have C Cleaner, it has a tab and I, an item you can select to see uh, the restore points you've got, and even to get rid of all except the, the most recent one. You can get rid of any or all. Hmm. But since they're sequential, I would not get rid of ones in between. Well, you might. Because each piece of software you've recently installed may have a set a uh, restore point, and you're running out of space for them. And you might want to get rid of the ones in between. Has anyone has uh, <laughs> anyone in this group not used the system restore and actually restored their system? It's Anything been a else? long. It's been a long time since I've done it. But you've done it. That's the point. Is you've oh. done. It. So I, I'll say here, everyone here has done it. So this is this is good. Isn't we're kind of rehashing something we know, um, but. It's very valuable tool. I've used it numerous occasions. <laughs> it beats the heck out of uh, 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 trying to manually fix it or have to uh, uh, take a backup and totally restore your drive. <laughs> I don't know what uh, influence things in Windows 11 like BitLocker built in, or maybe even your your hardware vendor mm -hmm. software uh, 
you know, can confuse, you know, whether you could recover or not. The Bit system locker sometimes in certain instances does get in the way, but usually for what we're talking, it does not. But uh, uh, if you uh, manipulate your uh, partitions like I do, then that locker becomes a headache. Okay, so we've kind of covered system restore, which is good. And any other last questions or comments about restore rating restore points, system restore? No. All right. So the other thing, Earl says, uh, HTTP versus HTTPS. What well, is the difference, right? Yes, I, I just. I, I don't know why you would not use HTTPS because actually the older, more common HTTP port 80, that's been deprecated for some years now. There are many websites that you cannot even get to the website on HTTP anymore. You have to use HTTPS. No, there's ways around it. That's the problem. And there are a lot of sites out there, especially uh, uh, these bogus ones that try and mimic a real site, and they only have HTTP, and that's definitely something you don't want to go to. Exactly. Uh, you should use port 443 all the time. Well, most browsers will warn you if you're going to a site that's using port 80 or HTTP. Yeah, they, they will the often S. do that. Uh, uh, and, uh, but the general view is just just use the S version. It's such, it, it basically gives you an encrypted tunnel to and from that website. Yeah. I, have on, I have on rare occasions encountered sites, mostly... Uh, commercial or advertising sites that just didn't have HTTPS. Well, uh, and, then, uh, it's risky, but uh, uh, if you know where you're going, it's okay. Well, who the heck is administrating that website? You know, it's all browser engines support <laughs> HTTPS. Yeah, but right. I remind right. you, uh, uh, Earl, this is a global <laughs> world, not just uh, uh, your <laughs> local uh, block that you live on. And there are lots of nations out there that have sites set up with only the HTTP, especially those that are criminally oriented. And that's reason <laughs> enough to stay away from those sites. If they reject your HTTPS URL, then don't go. So, when you're setting up a site, and you want to use HTTPS <laughs> to, to actually broadcast the site, you've got to download a certificate that's from a certificate holder. Okay. To create the site. Okay. So it, it, it adds complexity to the site to start okay. off with. Yeah. And I, I I'm agree with you, Earl. If if you're gonna be if you're gonna be creating a site, you should use it. But I'm saying that some site, some older sites and some older uh, groups don't have the wherewithal financially to actually download and create, have a site created for them. Maybe so. And most of the time right now, it's off of a foreign site that is... Uh, Trying to do nefarious things like Stanford and exactly. Tim said. <laughs> and I have, on, I have forgotten exactly how, clicked on some link that came in either email or somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I got a pop up window saying, uh, you know, we're not going to accept that communication. <laughs> uh, and and that's, that's good. And I'm glad they do that. So, uh, I, I'd like I never click through a site <laughs> from an email unless I'm darn sure I know who's. Yes, who, uh, that's, that's very good advice. 
I, I'd like to put a little sidebar on this about how Chrome has been warning us, uh, has been notifying us about HTTP, HTTPS. They used to, they have been using a padlock icon. Now, now, that it, now they're going to use an alert tone. They're going to okay. use a tone instead of an icon. So don't be surprised if your Chromium-based browsers stop showing the padlock. It doesn't mean it isn't HTTPS. It doesn't mean it's not secure. You should hear a tone that may be changing in Chrome. Firefox, I think they're going to keep it the same. Well, so, take, so take that as you will. <laughs> but anyway, okay. yeah, you, Earl is absolutely right. You mm -hmm. really want to make sure you're doing HTTPS everywhere. You don't need browser extensions anymore for this because your browser will almost always say, are you really sure you want to go there if it isn't HTTPS? Sure. <laughs> Two down from the one year we're at, uh, <laughs> use voice typing to talk <laughs> instead of uh, typing. Uh, if I might just comment one more thing on that. I'm in uh, the Firefox browser settings, and under privacy and security, it does have an HTTPS only mode. Correct. Right. And uh, But the default <laughs> is don't enable HTTPS mode but it has buttons for enable HTTPS only mode in all windows, enable HTTPS only mode in private windows only, and then the don't enable it. I always uh, uh, have an HTTPS only, and there's also uh, another uh, privacy setting. Uh, I can't remember the location right now and uh, what the label was. But uh, there's several different settings I change on all the browsers, whether they're <laughs> Chromium or Chrome or uh, Firefox based. What does Firefox mean when it says in private windows only as distinct from all windows? Okay. Uh, uh, that, uh, that's their incognito mode. Right. Okay. That, that uh, doesn't uh, collect cookies. It doesn't do a, a lot of other things. Yeah, basically, uh, uh, when you close the browser, everything you were doing disappears. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to click on Enable it in all windows. Oh, uh, uh, that's uh, where it should be as far as I'm concerned. I'm, at yeah, all I'm yeah. I, would, I I hadn't even bothered to look in the settings set. Oh, uh, you never. I'll just tell you, too, when I came up on Zoom earlier in the meeting, you, you could see me, but you couldn't hear me. So yeah. I, went, I, I switched over to use my Brave browser, which is actually a version of Chrome. But now I just, for the fun of it, I'm back in Firefox <laughs> under permissions. And if I go to uh, camera permissions, <laughs> It shows Zoom there uh, and uh, to allow it. But if I click on the settings for micro microphone, there's nothing in there. And I've been fiddling with it here a little bit. And I don't know how to get Zoom in here for the microphone. It sounds like uh, uh, it's not recognizing your microphone to begin with. I In Firefox, in Linux, I, you should see the first time you log into Zoom, there should be something you can click on in the title bar, in the URL bar. Uh, there should be some icon for camera. And the drop down is camera and microphone permissions. Well, they, okay. They've moved it to an icon. Okay. <laughs> well, at least I reset my uh, Firefox to... Uh, Enable only HTTPS. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad I <laughs> we had this discussion. So, even us experts learn something once in a while here. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, 
I'm I'm looking at this. Uh, no, I guess I, I thought I was looking at the Zoom thing, mm -hmm. but I guess I'm not. Okay, so our next item that uh, was brought up was using uh, voice typing with your PC. Um, this is a nice link because it gives you walkthroughs for Windows 10 or 11, depending upon which software you run. As you see on 10, it has this set of instructions. Windows 11 has a different set of instructions. Yeah. So... Um, I've never used it. Has anyone used um, dictation hmm. on their PC before? Yes, I have. Bert. Um, Many computers. Uh, and of course, it's, it, they have added more features in Office as well as uh, in Windows. So it, well, if you want to do an email, you can just click the button and start talking. Is it perfect? No, uh, but it's not. It's better than it used to be used to be I could do about 80 percent 85 percent now maybe it's 95 98 hmm. percent perfect based on your speaking okay what it gets in trouble with is some certain words if I say a number like the words like number seven does it put the number there or does it put the word there so you get in some dictation issues uh, like that uh, you have to know enough to say new line. Uh, it does some spelling correction, perhaps. And if it doesn't recognize what you say, it might put the wrong word in, but not that often. Now, I also have used read aloud and uh, speaking capability where it reads to me substantially. Uh, which is built into many different apps now and keeps getting more places. But I started using dictation from Windows, I don't know, 10 years ago. I used to do a program where I would put a document up on the screen and have it read the document, you know, uh, as part of the program. Or I'd be talking and have it uh, read the text as I was talking. But... It's better than it was before. Not perfect yet. Mm -hmm. Anybody can try it. You just turn it on. There's a there's information about uh, the rules, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, where, where, to give it some commands. So you, uh, to invoke it, you use the Windows and the H letter, the letter H, right? And that brings up the dictation. Well, I do it different ways. It depends what app you're in. If you're just doing it straight from Windows 11 uh, or even Windows 10, you sh it brings up a little icon at the top. That's what it used to be. Uh, and you would turn the mic on or turn the mic off. Uh, but now it's built into so many apps that you've got an icon in the, in the uh, toolbar that says Dictate. And you just, you just uh, like in Word, just click dictate and, and start talking. Well, I'm breezing through, here's all the commands. And when you're dealing with uh, dictating with numbers, letters, as you were, as Bert was talking about, uh, how it's going to respond. So it does take a little experimentation on here. Uh, you want me to bring up a screen in, in my email or something to show it? Sure. Here. So if I share a screen. Um, that green button in the bottom says share screen. I did that. I'm, going, I'm clicking on share. Okay. Oh, I got to click on the blue, blue box and then share. Here we go. There you go. Okay, so let me just minimize everything. Uh, let's just come up, pull up. That's the program for tonight. Okay, so let's assume I 
Um, well, here's a Word document. Let's go to a new document. And the thing I'm not always happy with is the various menus, like it minimizes the menu right now, perhaps. Or maybe it's also, here we are, there's Dictate. So I'll click on Dictate, new line. Well, it's a pleasure to show you how to dictate in Microsoft Word at the Chicago Computer Society meeting. You can see that it pretty much just lets you keep talking, but sometimes you have to remember to say period, new line. How, how did you turn that on? Well, in the menu in my current version of and Word. the ribbon up on top, he turned on. Right here. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's built right into 365. Well, this is Word, in Microsoft Office. So, but in three in Windows, it's built in different places. Each app might have a different solution. Now, just so you see on mine, I added an icon here to speak. So, after dictate, I also have speak. So, watch this. I'll click well, on in the menu in my current version of Word right here. Well, it's a pleasure to show you how to dictate in Microsoft Word at the Chicago Computer Society meeting. You can see that it's pretty much just let you keep talking, but sometimes you have to remember to say. So I use the speak part every day for all my emails, all my articles that I want. I have it read to me. So, uh, Bert, yeah. if you wanted it to actually type the word period instead of make a period, uh, how would you make the distinction? You might have to spell it. Oh, spell it out, word work. All right. Okay. Um, but generally, you could see how fast I spoke. And mm -hmm. it kept up very well. Yeah, so pretty impressive. <laughs> these are powerful tools. They've been there for a long time but it's a little bit better each time they upgrade <laughs> the programs. But this is how I survive the world. Um, whether this is an email or whether this is a document, uh, there's a lot of places where the speak capability is in there or the, uh, for the speak is where it reads back to you, but dictate is in there. Of course, they've had a feature in Excel for years and years where you could have the Excel read formulas, the document spreadsheet uh, sells back to you. Uh, that's been there forever. Um, where used to be two people had to figure out the number, if the numbers were correct, one would read and one would, would speak what it was supposed to be. But now, of course, with that tool in Excel, you can instead have it read to you and see if it's accurate as you're going along. So there's lots of features, you know, <laughs> there's a, a thousand features nobody knows are there and you only you only have an occasion to use uh, perhaps. But th this dictation, recently I've used more and more. Any other thoughts or? Thank you, Bert. All right, I'll thank, thank you. Anyone else want to ask questions about using dictation? Okay, how do I unshare? Uh, you just hit top stop of, there. Left top no. where it says top. red. Look for the red at the top. Stop share. Okay, there we go. There you go. Perfect. By the way, the, uh, if uh, that's uh, over with, uh, uh, the next two items might be of interest to several people in that uh, mm -hmm. on things you can do with the webcam. Okay, let's see, what do we got next? Mm -hmm. 
how to access advanced settings for your sure webcam okay. yeah no wrong one sorry there you go I like the uh, uh, title of uh, the maker of the article on the black line on the left. You mean how to how to access no. advanced? Who made the uh, 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 article? That's on the, the black. Team. Oh, Phantom Phantom. 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 Tips. Phantom. Wahab. It's usually first uh, syllable in Arabic. Yeah, wasn't paying attention to that. <laughs> they translated it very well if they wrote this in Arabic. Um, no, Arab Americans are uh, well represented in IT. <laughs> so are Indian Americans. Okay, so they're saying in order to get these advanced get it to the advanced settings you have to load in ffmpeg a co command line tool for handling media files hmm. um, so we what we don't know is this a good product to download <laughs> just because oh, yes it's oh. used all the time on linux systems right oh yeah that's very well known yeah. uh, very well known Oh, Very okay. Early. You're serious. I thought this. I was. I didn't know if you were being facetious or not. No, it's a, a, a legitimate product as far as that goes. Uh, the uh, thing you have to worry about when downloading <laughs> is the source of the download, because you could have a bad site that uh, does introduce things you don't want. For sure. So as long as you got a a, a good uh place to download from that you're uh confident in uh you're okay okay so it's giving you all a bunch of command line things you need to do yeah there's quite a bit of uh, uh shit there but it's uh it gives you some ability to adjust your camera to get all the capabilities and features out of it Okay, I'm, I'm kind of going through this quick to see. All right, so it lets you control your brightness, contrast, hue, all, all the, the color settings. Yes. Um, your exposure, of course, you, you're limited whether you could do apertures or zoom. Those are probably fixed. The only reason I bring uh, this one up is because... Uh, uh, <laughs> Some people may find that uh, they don't like uh, their webcam default settings. And this is a way of possibly improving it versus getting a new webcam, especially for a laptop. It's built in. If you don't like uh, uh, the settings, this might uh, allow you to change it. But at the same time, too, uh, the only other option would be to get an external webcam like you have on a desktop and hang it on the top there until uh, your uh, programs like Zoom use this external USB cam uh, webcam on uh, uh, Zoom, not the internal one. Wow, it's kind of nice that it gives you these advanced settings. Yeah, it's a, a a bit of work, but usually you do these things one time, and once you got it set the way you uh, uh, want to get your the quality of your video, you almost forget about the whole thing. The second one is about focal length, which is uh, interesting too. That could, uh, uh, for some people, maybe give uh, them uh, the equivalent <laughs> of a blur background. Well, my camera is on 
blur background right now, is it not? Well, uh, there's uh, uh, settings in Zoom and uh, yeah. some other programs that give you an artificial version, <laughs> but that doesn't work for everybody. Okay. And as an end result, this uh, the second article uh, talks about the focal length. Well, <laughs> if you have the focal length uh, uh, set to, say, four feet, anything beyond four feet, likely it'll be out of focus. <laughs> like yeah. uh, uh, your blur is within Zoom. And Zoom is doing it as a filter. Right. Right. And you can change it from the uh, blur background. You can uh, uh, have all different kinds of different backgrounds uh, uh, yeah. that make it look like you're in the library. As yeah. I'd like to see somebody try <laughs> using this thing and let us know how this goes. <laughs> Maybe I should. My video is not that great on my camera. What do you guys think? Is it kind of crispy or dull? Mine, it says it's like soft. Yeah, well, mine is too, but that also depends. Uh, uh, my camera is a 720p, not a 1080p yeah. or a 4K. Mm -hmm. And that makes a difference. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think mine's 720 also. Yeah, uh, especially if it's in a laptop, unless it's pretty modern, <laughs> it probably is a 720. Okay. Yeah, mine's an external. I have two web uh, webcams, one of which is very old and really low res, and I don't use it for my face. Yeah, so I mean, I I've use... got uh, two other uh, 1080p uh, uh, webcams I can use, but uh, yeah. uh, why bother? The 720 seems <laughs> to do good enough as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and you might not want it, you might not want the full details of your face showing up on something like Zoom. Mm, possible. Well, you know, my my setup is in my bedroom, and you, why should I show my bed sitting back here? Yeah, you know, we can uh, generally make that out. It's just yeah, and that's and, fine. And, you know, we have our my condo association has Zoom meetings, and mm -hmm. you know they're all in somebody's house, and I think most people say, yeah, you want to see me, but you don't need to see, you know, my ketchup bottle on the table over there right and uh, uh like for me uh, uh my zoom on this machine that i'm mm -hmm. on right now cannot do any of the background filtering that zoom <clears throat> handles uh -huh. but if we were on teams microsoft teams mm -hmm. it yeah. does work that's interesting i think it adds character to let people see things like my sewing machine <laughs> where I stitch together well, code. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bob should put what, who, who is that cat stick that thing for a cat in the background? Where's the cat? Is what I want. I no, all I've got in the background is my chair and my sewing oh, machine. Some, somebody had a thing that showed it looked like I thought it was a cat. I have a oh. cat. I have two of them. Yeah. There it is, right there. See? Tim's got cats. I, I just had the wrong name, that's all. They're real cats. They're not just cat effigies or cat statues. That's right. <laughs> yeah. If they were cat statues, it would be a lot easier to handle. And one's uh, <laughs> uh, called a, a, a munchkin cat because of a genetic defect. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we kind of diverged off the topic here, and mm -hmm. I want to circle back to uh, the things I have on my list. Mm -hmm. And someone would like to pick out another topic we should discuss. Pete, what do you think? Come on, find something in my list. Means I got to change the screens. Okay, well, I want you to change that screen and stop looking at the things you were looking at. <laughs> You're not shopping on my time. Jim, no, he's, he's looking at Playboy. Uh, no, I wasn't insinuating anything like that. <laughs> Play the boys, Playboy these days isn't what it used to be anyway. Yeah. Oh, right. You're, you're, you're right. You're, you're right, Bob. <laughs> I... Boy. 
They have a couple of things about speeding up internet connection, or at least one thing. Okay. Yeah, they have two things about it. They're separated by an item. That's there's speed. slow Wi-Fi in your house, and there's also speed up your internet connection. Let me go back to how to speed up your internet connection. Well, let's see what they have to say on how to speed up your inter internet connection. Uh, oh, they're talking about a DSL service. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or how fast is your satellite service? I hope nobody here is on DSL or satellite. I should ask, is there anybody in the group on DSL? <laughs> no, that should be long gone. Or a satellite. No, it ain't. No, uh, uh, AT and T still sells a, a DSL. If you're if you're out in the uh, farm country, they still have DSL out that way. I know they do, but I pity anyone. And my my son was in <laughs> such a circumstance, and he got uh, Starlink, and is absolutely thrilled with it. Oh, sure. Yeah, go up go up to New Hampshire or Vermont or parts of Maine. They're still on DSL if they even have that. Right. What's that thing called? But they they should be able to get uh, something like Starlink or satellite oh, yeah. service. You can, you can get Starlink. Uh, Starlink is a little tricky if you live in mountainous terrain, because if you're in a valley, you might or might not have line of sight. Yes. Also, there's uh, Hughes now. Yeah. Uh, well, Hughes is very slow compared with Starlink. Really you, slow. You do have to have oh. for Starlink the instructions <laughs> claim you need such and such an arc of clear sky. That Correct. Is to say, you know, trees or whatever. So my son, when he installed his uh, Starlink, had to go to quite some lengths to get an <laughs> adequate view of the sky because of the tall trees around the house. But yeah, the same thing. <laughs> The same thing happened with digital television, yeah. especially especially when Chicago used to have just Channel 2 still on VHF and trying to get line of sight and get that low frequency without the signal bouncing around was a real problem. I, I can imagine but that when, But with Starlink, it's not like that because it's really high frequency. Yeah. Uh, but still, if you have a mountain in the way, it's going to be a problem. So I'm, I'm using that. a 5G wireless gateway. Yeah, for my internet right now. Okay, that's provided by the uh, telephone company Tower. No, Generally it's it is. provided by my T-Mobile account. Okay. Yeah, that's cell phone. That's cell phone that's provider. That's what I mean. That's your cell phone provider. Yeah, it's it's not POTS. It's cell phone. Yeah. And so yeah, no wire. Uh, actually, the 5G wireless gateways, some people say, can be slower than uh, some of the slowest tiers of cable internet. It, it can be slower, but uh, my cable bill at the other apartment, which was fiber, was yeah. over 100 a month. And this is adding thirty dollars a month to my bill. Yeah, so you're saving money, a lot of money, and you're able to do Zoom. You're able to do what you want to do. Yeah, it's a good picture. <laughs> what kind of speed are you getting, Pete? I'm hmm. getting twenty twenty five megs. Pretty good. I'm I'm get I'm quite adequate. I can do this. I can. Uh, stream videos in i don't render videos out so i don't have to worry about that <laughs> okay we so can run both computers at the same time and the, the gateway is actually handling my printer and the printer is working a lot better sure so how to speed up your internet connection in the case of this article is upgrade to a modern technology right <laughs> there you go 
<laughs> but do they? Uh, I. What about the article about fixing slow Wi-Fi in your home? Is that more up to date? Well, one of the things they're saying <laughs> out here is that if you notice a slowdown, is you should you could uh, reboot your router. Yeah, that's something you often would uh, still do. Doing that just it cleans out a lot of junk that builds up in the in the cache or in mm -hmm. the buffers on it. Um, that will help quite a bit. Periodically, I reboot all my system. Anyways, I found that it's very advantageous, if not mm -hmm. uh, keeps my wife a little happier. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when things go awry, <laughs> I don't know why. Once in a while, our <laughs> Uh, we'll have internet connection. I'm sorry. Stanford, we'll have... did you just say that you give your wife a boot occasionally? <laughs> <laughs> a reboot? <laughs> a reboot. <laughs> occasionally, I'll find that uh, I'll be connected up to the router, and it'll say connected, but no internet. Mm -hmm. Your Wi-Fi is connected, but you have no internet. I have no idea what factor causes that situation. I, two things may have happened. I, the log in to the to their network may have failed. In other words, the handshake may have failed, or there may be excessive numbers of people using your particular branch if you are cable and not DSL. Okay. Oh, I see. The, the other thing that could have happened is that something interrupted the cable by mechanical means somewhere in the thing and you got yeah. handed a new ip p address for your uh, gateway okay all right so when i yeah. when it happens i usually just wind up rebooting the system and, and it works pretty good then it, it solves a problem but it just can be annoying when it happens and even if you just switch from the 2.4 band to the 5 gigahertz <laughs> band uh, it, it'll work just fine on the 5, but not on the 2.4, or vice versa. Often it's the 5 that goes out, and the 2.4 stays up. So I've yet to figure this one out. Uh, I was just playing around going into my Comcast cable modem, and I do notice on the Wi-Fi settings, uh, you... It, it allows you to click on 20 megahertz, or I mean 20 megabit bandwidth, or 20 megahertz. But there's another yeah. button next to it is 20 slash 40, uh, which I <clears> think <throat> means that if there's two adjacent <clears throat> channels uh, free, it will actually double the throughput. Yeah, if you have MIMO, which uh, uses more than one antenna yeah. well, you, I, on your router, that will be possible. I, I, I don't know whether I do or don't. I've never clicked on it. I just say I've seen it there. Yeah, current Wi-Fi standards allow you to lock together two channels and share them so that you've got data going on both. Yeah. And that will increase your potential throughput by a huge amount. Gamers well, do that all the time. Theoretically double it, yeah. Yeah, gamers do that all the time. Do they? And it drives their parents crazy. I imagine. Because <laughs> then they're chewing up all the bandwidth. I imagine they do. <laughs> they are, sure. <laughs> okay, this one next article... <laughs> Uh, was it how to fix a slow Wi-Fi connection in your house? Yeah. Get close. <laughs> yeah, get closer to your router. That <laughs> always helps. Put the router, which they don't say in here, put the router in a central location of high above, high up as you can. Yeah. They don't tell you that in here. Uh, where you place the router is a, a most important thing. Don't, don't put the forward. router in the microwave or the stove or the refrigerator. Yeah. Right. Um, 2.4 is much better for penetration of intermediate mm -hmm. stuff than is the 5.2. Right. The lower the frequency, the further yeah. it can go and the more it can go around walls and stuff. Yeah. The 5 is, the higher number is, 
it's short-sighted. It's all, more or less line of sight. Yes, more or less. Um, so they tell you in here how far is your, your Wi-Fi device from the router. You know, you could use something like a Wi-Fi inspector to see where your signal falls off. Um, I don't know if anyone in this group has used that before. It's an app that I've loaded on my phone, preferably an Android phone or a tablet that's Wi-Fi only. Um, that works really good. I, there is one that runs in, on the iPhone. It works pretty good down there too. Okay. Um, do a speed test. They recommend you do that in this article. Uh, you go to just type in your browser, something like speedtest.net, and you can go and run a speed test right there. You could do that if anyone wants to. They could do it right while we're doing this uh, thing here. Let's let's do this right now. Speed test. I've done it before. I know how much we did. Okay. Well, you know, it changes all the time. Um, your, speed, your speed is dependent upon who else is on there unless okay. you're on fiber. So let's see. I uh, got 230 megabits. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. I don't remember what I'm paying for. I think I'm paying for 100. So, but this bounces around from Comcast or Verizon. Sure. It's always mm -hmm. up and down. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh. I get about the same speeds. So I think they're just filtering it. So that's all you can get. Right, right. That's exactly what they do. They filter it for what you get. And that's it. Um, so that worked pretty good, 235 bits. But that, what else is everyone getting? I've gotten about double that. Uh on my Comcast cable. Okay. Pete, run it right now. Tell us what you get. Bob, what do you get? Uh, 215 to 220. And rising a little bit. Eldo? <laughs> Was that a no? I don't know. I don't know. we we'll have to check. Just go run a speed test right now. Just open up your browser. Go to speedtest.net. And my upload is 12. Oh, good. So you'll get, you'll get a much faster upload if you're on fiber. Then it's equal down yeah. to equal up. This is true. But then again, who needs all that upstream unless you are trying to do something like file sharing. Yeah, I don't, you know, yeah, if you, if you have a lot of file sharing or you got to send some big files, you'd need more upload speed. Yeah. Jim, Freeberg, what do you get? Who? Jim Freeberg. I'm, I'm still running here. Hang on. Go ahead and run the test. Okay, so I'm oh, 14 and a half oh, downloaded. Gary Bell before I could ask him. <laughs> I got 229 down and 6.6 .6 up. Hmm. Well, I've two, got... two. Okay, that's good. The down, the up is a little slow, but the, the down yeah, is great. I, I usually get around 20 back up. Okay. Well, you know... I have, was... a, I have a new cable modem and a new router, <laughs> so I didn't mean to have everything set right yet. Yeah, and, and that's a reason, and those are good things to, like, monitor what's going on. Are they set? Are they tuned to the best of the ability? And if you're not getting what you're supposed to be getting from their cable modem, if you're renting it, then you call whoever you're getting it from and say, hey, goose me up. Eldo, what does it say? <laughs> Can't hear you, Eldo. Eldo, you're muted. Well, I'll tell you, I get 321 download and 115 <laughs> upload. Oh, but that's mm -hmm. with, with this app, you know, with Zoom going, that takes quite a bit of bandwidth. Well, it does take, yeah. you know, part of your upload speed is going right to that. Oh, yeah, sure. I've got uh, uh, 272 down right now mm -hmm. and 50, almost 55 mm -hmm. upload. That's wonderful. Yeah, my nominal speed, my nominal speed is three hundred. So, 
Uh, getting 220 means uh, someone's taking up a fair amount. Sure. And that could be someone in your building, too. Well, there's lots of people in the building. Yeah. <laughs> we never but, heard what Aldo's getting. He's he, he doesn't want to tell us. I think things are different out in that uh, sun-filled state of his. Well, he's still probably using that 56K modem. <laughs> I got 15 and 10. One, five, and 10. 15 and 10? Yep. That's where it said. 15, 15 down. Say that again? You're getting only 15 megabit? Yeah, download. that's where it showed. For download and uh, uh, 10 upload. What are you paying for? Is that what you're paying for? It's part of the house. I mean, I'm in a place where it's uh, we got a mesh. Okay. And uh, then I, I checked, like, the Wi-Fi is, like, 250, something like that. Hmm. It's, uh, it's 5G. It used to be, like, 4G, now it's 5G. Okay. Oh, so you're using a 5G access point. Yeah, and it must be recent. Yeah, those are always slower. <laughs> okay, I'm happy. <laughs> That's pretty it's good. using something like I'm using, probably. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it. Like a Verizon thing? It's a Spectrum. 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 Up in, okay. in Los Angeles area. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I know Spectrum out in Ohio, and it's moving into Indiana, too. Okay. So I'm at 14, 14 and a half down and 16 and a quarter up. Wow. That, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. What? That's crazy that you got a faster upload than you do a download. Well, don't forget that download speed is representative of what's, shall we say, your free speed, considering you're on the internet, running right. Zoom, possibly <laughs> a browser, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And he's at 1,500, 1500 feet. Well, that usually doesn't uh, count in uh, uh, the internet. <clears throat> you never know up there in Hawaii what they, what they do. The higher up the altitude is, the closer you are to something, and it makes you, you got to pay more for it. Anyways. You're only uh, uh, closer to uh, satellites if that's what you're using. <laughs> do you think that, uh, that yeah, uh, really, as if uh, you, when you're using an old router, I know when I changed to a newer one, it made a big difference. Mm -hmm. if you, in the course of using a mesh, you're connecting to all those mesh devices, and they may not be upgraded to match that newer router. That's um, a possibility. Well, a router essentially is a PC. It's a computer. That's right. So it does have a processor on there. It has RAM and storage. And all that comes into play in terms of how fast it can do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. the, the older uh, devices had old, older processors. And they, they use the cheapest, lowest end processors that they can get away with when they make these mm -hmm. make the routers. And the same so, for the memory and its speed. Right. So basically, Bert, um, substantiating what you're saying is... The older the router is, the slower it's going to be. Like buy a new one, buy a new system, and you'll speed it up. Well, so like my newer router goes to a thousand, whatever number. Right. But it's those older gigabit. ones, devices wouldn't be doing that. Right. They might only be a hundred. Right. It's a possibility, especially if uh, 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 the old one uh, only has two point four gigahertz uh, uh, capability. That's uh, uh, the end band, 100 is the uh, most you could ever possibly pull out of it, and that's doing fantastic. Jim, did you do a test and tell us what you got? Well, my latest test was 313 down and twenty and 25 up. 25 up. Nice. Up. The, the other thing that can have some effect on these is how fast the processor is in the machine you're using. You're, PC you're using or whatever device yeah. you're using. Absolutely. You guys probably all have these souped up ones, so it probably oh. it probably doesn't make any difference. But don't don't tell us with old stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of old consumers in this group here. 
<laughs> I've got machines that are uh, uh, almost uh, 20 years old, and they're still running uh, Windows 10. Yeah, I'm one of the few who recently upgraded everything. Sure, rub it in. Rub it in. <laughs> now, my gateway is rated at 433 megahertz. Oh, yeah. oh I your looked gateway it up. Is. I thought you meant your gateway PC. No. <laughs> no. They still make gateways. But but that's a 430. Wait, your gateway is rated at 433 megahertz. That's a bad. Wow. Bandwidth through it. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, that is a limiting factor if I can get a signal up here strong enough to do it. Mm -hmm. So my, my limit is that I've mm -hmm. only got two bars on the 5G. Mm -hmm. So i got to move the towers. Well, that only do. Well, that what? only takes an act of the legislature. <laughs> well, you you could also cause a huge traffic jam <laughs> in the area. <laughs> Actually, that would probably make it worse. Yeah. You, yeah. Need, you need to get the cars out of your area, and then you'll have better bandwidth. It, it, no, there's hardly any cars up here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice, quiet neighborhood. That isn't the problem. Not cars, not phones. There's plenty of <laughs> throughput on the system. Yeah. You know, in Hawaii, we've got a, a fiber that's about a seven or eight inches in diameter coming here yeah. because of all the supercomputers in the military. Mm -hmm. Do I remember There's that? There's so many yeah. teraflops of data coming across that, that cable that <laughs> would blow most of you away. Sorry, Bert, you were saying? Do I remember that when because different devices have uh, B N A whatever it is, <laughs> it, it, the slowest device slows down your communication? Yeah, uh, yeah, it'll slow down do the whole is, network. Uh, uh, find yourself a uh, old computer uh, with Wi-Fi uh, with the uh, B band, which is eleven uh, uh, megabits uh, per second, and everything will be going at that speed. That's what I thought. So that's another reason why sometimes people are surprised. Well, how, uh, how slow it is. Uh, B, G, and N only exist on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, uh, if everybody else is on five, they're not going to notice it at all. Or AC? AC uh, covers the five gigahertz uh, uh, bandwidth. It's uh, uh, broken up into uh, about four sections, with I think a fifth one coming. Hmm. There's uh, five gigahertz. There's six gigahertz right now, and coming hmm. is the seven gigahertz. And then also sometimes five G uses the low band. T-Mobile uses the low band. So the old, uh, no, that, that's uh, 5G the is, uh, for cell phones uh, type connection. I'm talking 5 gigahertz on uh, uh, mm -hmm. most people's routers. Yeah, that's true. So an old printer, printer could be slowing down <laughs> everybody's system. Yeah, possible. But uh, uh, if somebody is, uh, if you're on 5 gigahertz uh, on your router, and you got a neighbor that's on uh, 2.4 gigahertz, band B, at 11 megabits per second, you're not going to notice it. It's only their devices that are going to be down at uh, 11 megabits per second uh, speed, not yours. Unless it's a gamer taking up all the power. Again, that would probably be somebody on your own network. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> it, uh, you got to remember, you're in a big uh, complex. The more people that are using the service on Internet, the slower everybody's speed goes. 
Yeah, that would not be true of fiber optic, but it is true of cable. Right. Fiber optic is connected up like the old by uh, like the old POTS phone system. Only it's made with fiber. Whereas cable was originally just for downstream. But but there was a there is a limitation on fiber on its full bandwidth because of the color frequency spectrum of these transducers that's converting this electrical signal to uh, well, me the mechanical light. Well, that also depends upon uh, uh, how old uh, the fiber is. There's one gigahertz, yeah. five gigahertz <laughs> now, and even 10 gigahertz. Well, mm -hmm. at and just installed fiber optic in my building and into the apartments, uh, but they haven't uh, connected anything yet. But uh, it's interesting how thin a cable is. It's from fiber. Oh, it's next to nothing. <clears throat> your eyelashes, uh, uh, if you get them in your eye, is uh, probably as big or bigger than uh, the uh, glass fiber. Uh, guys, let me interrupt. I'm going to sign off. Okay. Okay. Have a good night. Uh, I'll be at the Indian Prairie meeting tomorrow at the okay. Innsbruck Community Center. All right. Earl, bye thanks bye. for joining us. <laughs> yeah, bye. enjoy it. Bye-bye. Aloha, Earl. Earl. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, so um, do we want to bring up one more topic for the evening? Off the list. <laughs> how about how about a non on the list topic? Oh, I'm good with a non on the list. <laughs> so I I had a near miss lightning strike yesterday or uh, Sunday night. Okay, you all remember Jerry Sass? Yes, I live next door to Jerry Sass. I didn't know that. Well, yes, I did. are you no, are you lightning? lightning pardon. Are you to the right or to the left of him if you're looking at his house? If you're looking at his house to the right. To the right of him, okay. So lightning struck the chimney of Jerry's house. Wow. Blew the whole, t the second plus story of the chimney away. There were bricks in as far as the middle of my backyard, as far as the middle of his backyard. Um and the uh, neighbor behind me went out when the uh, uh, ISP guy was there, and the little module down in the ground had melted on one of them, and on another one, it uh, was severely damaged. Wow. In my house, it was weird because I lost my cable modem, both of my main routers, three Ethernet switches, and one TV set out of three. Sure. And it doesn't appear to have been because of the power connections. It appears to have been because of the Ethernet connections. Yes, because that got hit yeah. uh, uh, in the ground and uh, uh, blew out the surge protectors there. <laughs> It ran through the line and it, and it could also be a static uh, <laughs> discharge too meaning or an erratic voltage spike ah and so you're thinking it, it might be an emt pulse that uh ran along the the connection from the those cable boxes outside to to the house <laughs> okay we, we, we got hit by lightning about 30 years ago. We lost the computer. Uh, we lost the television. <laughs> the other appliances were, you know, washer, dryer, refrigerator, stove, everything else was okay. And well, I, a I, big I, black spot on the side of the house. Yeah, you know. We have like four computers and none of the computers were affected. Oh, my, 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 it was black inside. I mean, it just fried the whole inside of the... Jim, yeah, are all 30 years are, ago we got hit. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, inside, are all yeah. the computers connected wireless? No. Um, 
all of the computers are actually wired. Well, we have a search protector, man, and just hop right through that, baby. Yeah. Jim, uh, were all the uh, uh, four computers uh, turned on at the time? Mine? No. But it went through the search protector. <laughs> I, said, and, yeah. uh, I think, and, I think and, one and, or and, two and of them were actually... Terry, 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 hold up. Hold up, Terry. Terry. I think one or two of them were active and a, and a couple of them were asleep. <laughs> but you said your switches died. Yes. They so when they died, they protected your computers. Right. Ah, the <laughs> routers and the switches uh, uh, gave up their life uh, to save your computers. So this that was the pack, computers pack was along the network connection and not the power connection. Well, the, the other thing I learned is uh, if you don't have to run a, a, a an Ethernet cable to your TV set, don't do it. Bert, you were asking? No, I was saying that this is, uh, you know, tells people it's better to keep everything wireless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened with, how did Fran handle it? Um, well, the interesting part is when the chimney blew, the bricks, some of the bricks from the chimney <laughs> knocked her gas pipe off. The gas connection totally off. Wow. So I realized what was going on. I'm looking out the window and my neighbor on the other side is walking past the house. And she waves at me and I go down and she said, Do you smell it? And we had gas. There was the gas pipe was uh spewing gas and the fire truck had showed up and they were waiting for the gas company to get there. But the fire department managed to turn off the gas so they got that taken care of but she also had something leaking water from the second floor down so by the time they were done they had the gas turned off the water turned off the electricity was still on um but she went to stay with her sister who lives about a half a mile from here so she stayed overnight with her sister then today she came back and got some stuff, and one of the daughter-in-laws got her into a uh, short-term housing arrangement so she could uh, sort of have a place of her own while they get the mess cleaned up. And wow. the service, service now folks were there all day today um, picking up stuff and cleaning up the inside. The mm -hmm. furnace was moved about two and a half feet in the basement. <clears throat> wow, really? <laughs> Yeah. Holy mackerel. Her <laughs> furnace was moved. Yes, her furnace was moved. Holy crap. <laughs> How is it was Fran home at the time? Yes. But that scared the hell out of her. It scared the hell out of everybody <laughs> within about six houses. Wow. Because I was I was in a closet about 40, <laughs> 50 feet from the chimney when it got hit. She <laughs> was in her house. The neighbor behind us is probably, oh, 75 yards away. His dog jumped about four feet off the floor, and his wife leaped, leapt out of bed. I, I sort of jumped because I, it was one of these where you sort of see the flash, and then the bang is immediate, and it was the loudest thing I've ever heard in the house. So it, it was uh, interesting. So Fran now has sort of, she sort of calmed down. She's talked to the uh, insurance folks and I think they were getting everything under control. Um, but her, the son who lives the closest was there yesterday uh, sorting things out and his wife was back today uh, helping Fran get stuff straightened out. So that's the son that lives in Peoria? No, this, this one lives down, um, um, Crap. Down That's by okay. Joliet. Yeah. Okay. Romeoville. Romeoville. <laughs> Got it. So it was exciting. That's exciting. Um, Serb suppressors help too on situations like that. I think, you know, the idea is that they're going to take the hit, but looks like uh, you just had some couple hundred, maybe a hundred bucks worth of stuff you got to replace. 
Well, no, it's more like a thousand counting the TV set. Oh, TV set too. Well, it's right at your deductible, so it's whether you want to do it or not. <laughs> yeah, I, there are surge suppressors that are whole house surge suppressors that you put on the main box. Yes. I don't right. know whether that, I don't think that'll, I don't think even that will suppress a, a direct hit by lightning. But that's uh, only and, and for the electric. It would not have helped in this case because it didn't come on in over the power lines right it came in through the yeah. network lines yes yeah so uh and i don't think uh, uh the only thing i've <laughs> ever seen is uh surge protectors and ups's that uh, uh will allow you to connect uh, uh your uh, uh cable connection in and get uh, another one out and that would give up its life yeah on a, a, a such a hit but uh, <laughs> uh Odds are, uh, the way that sounds, it still would have affected other devices down the chain. Yeah. No. Maybe not as much, but uh, uh, still, that's quite a bit. And most people on their TVs do not put on a at least a surge protector that would also take the cable uh, that goes uh, uh, to <clears throat> the uh, TV from the uh, TV box and uh, put it through the surge protector also. Yeah. Well, my, my lesson was keep the, the TV set wireless and don't try to get better speed by connecting a cable to a, uh, an ethernet cable to it. Well, well I, I saw mean, some photographs back in the lab of when they were doing some lightning tests down in Florida mm -hmm. and they were doing created lightning to sand yep and it actually centers the sand to glass yeah. and it does yep. it for about 40 feet <laughs> around mm -hmm. the stripe so there's yep. that much energy so mm. a little a little chip that's about that big is not going to stop that energy <laughs> yeah that's no. for sure. Jim, did you look inside the computer itself? Uh, I, ours was black inside. I mean, everything was like charcoal, the whole thing inside the computer. I, I haven't had time to take anything apart yet. That's that's going to be probably a next week mm -hmm. project. Yeah. yeah. And then TV, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you wanted a new TV, didn't you, Jim? Not really. <laughs> We we had just gotten all of our we cut the cable about six months ago. So we had just gotten all of our streaming things set up and all our credentials squared away and we were we were uh, merrily watching all of our various things. So So did you go with and buy a bigger TV this time? I can't buy a bigger TV because I have a spot in my in the cabinetry in our family room. So I have a, it's only a 43 inch TV. Oh, you poor all guy. It fits in the opening. You poor guy. I get rid yeah, of that. Really see, drives see, me the, crazy. The funny part is if you had uh, uh, um, the problem come through the electrical lines, you have surge protector or a UPS. A <laughs> lot of them, if they're uh, uh, fairly new, have uh, uh, usually some kind of a guarantee on them for a, a, a pretty good sum of money to replace all damaged equipment. <laughs> but if you don't have those, you're SOL. And especially through the uh, uh, Ethernet, your uh, uh, modem uh, that uh, came from uh, your service, if that came from them and you're running it, they'll replace it usually. But uh, all the other devices uh, uh, will probably come out of your pocket. Yeah. And it's my cable modem, too. So. <laughs> yeah, but it, it didn't touch any of the appliances, the washer, dryer, stove, refrigerator, I guess. Uh, no. I no. guess they're different, whatever. Remember, <laughs> Terry, he didn't have an electrical surge. It went through his Ethernet connection. Yeah, the That's power your wide to your effective. internet. Well, it, it came in and probably you know hit hit one of the wires and then you know from once no, it hit the wire no, and it spread. No, yeah. no, the uh, uh, wires of the uh, a hole 
internet connectivity took the whole uh, uh, heat <laughs> and uh, wiped out and uh, died before it got to his computers. But it uh, uh, had nothing to do with his uh, TV that died. Mm -hmm. One of the things yeah. I wonder is what happened to the internet service provider, or was it Comcast? What happened at their box? How far back up the line did it go? Well, that's a possibility too. Well, it, it melted there at the back of our lots. There's one <laughs> at the back of Jerry's lot, and it had a, a module about this big that had four uh, cable connections on it. That was totally melted. Oh, okay. And the one behind my house, three of them were damaged, but I don't think it was as much melted as the other one was. So it, it sounds like it propagated down the line. So it, it went across the backyard, wiped out the thing at the end of the yard, and that probably was enough to protect uh, right. the service. So, so, Jim, are you on fiber? No, no. No. That, that's, no, okay. that's cable. So what he had was a distribution node that was yeah. right in the backyard <laughs> um, yeah. that handles like they're usually set up in fours, like four houses at a time that yeah. come off of that. It's just a simple th simple box, but they do have a grounding wire that goes down to the ground too right there. So, um, but yeah, that, that took the hit. Yeah. Uh, offhand, uh, uh, Jim, as far as uh, uh, your idea on the TV going uh, uh, wireless, you can go Ethernet. If you went through your switches, the switches already died along with your modems and routers. And uh, uh, so your TV would have probably been just fine. But if you went too short and more direct uh, uh, towards the routers, that's uh, uh, mm -hmm. how it got a big surge and killed the TV. <laughs> yeah. I'll say this is an unusual circumstance. Yes. It doesn't very. happen very yeah. often. That, <laughs> well, there was, there was one TV that was within, say, 12 feet of the cable modem and the one router. And it, it, it wasn't bothered because it was totally wireless. Mm -hmm. But the TV that was furthest away from the surge and furthest away from the router was the one that we ran. We typically run it over the wireless link, but I had connected it up the Ethernet directly to the TV set because we were experimenting with using that. And I think it was the connection of the wireless of the uh, um ethernet cable that well, did in the tv yes but uh, uh now that cable that went into the tv was it a direct wire back to the uh, routers and modem it went through um one uh splitter okay oh wait a minute i, I take that back the the cable the ethernet cable that went to the tv came directly off the, the router yes and that's a uh, uh, it died and had it been uh, uh through the closest switch the switch would have probably uh died uh, before the surge got to the tv that's what i'm getting at okay i see what you mean. it's all hypothetical you don't know but right. that's probably it's all guesswork reason. but uh, uh uh the way it's sounding every uh his all of his computers are okay because uh, uh, the routers, modem, and uh, uh, switches all perished, yeah. stopping uh, uh, yeah. the flow of uh, static electricity. Yep. It's, Jim, go ahead and hook it up wired. It doesn't matter. You know, the <laughs> chances, as we know, the chances of getting hit by lightning is very, very slim these days. Uh, um, well, it doesn't sound know, like it. it. <laughs> It happened to Terry. And lightning never hits the same place twice. Uh, wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wrong. I beg to differ this one because I was going to add in that Jim, my house when I lived in Naperville, the chimney got struck twice wow. by lightning. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the and one of the times it took out my modem and it took out a a, a uh was it interface? I, I think wait, my network interface on a 
card that was in a PC, you know, and several and and a TV, you know, just took out a whole bunch of things. Anyways, but that was one of them. But I did get strike that that chimney got struck twice. Uh, <laughs> oh, definitely you not as bad as what happened to uh, Fran. Um, <clears throat> that that's really chaotic. I did have a hole that got blown in my chimney. It was about that big, you know. Um, but it was repairable. You know, had somebody come in and they fixed it. But and the other time it just blew the cap off. So it's crazy. Uh, stuff happens. All right, uh, we're at the close to the end of our meeting tonight. Uh, does anyone have any last topics? Um, no. I am looking for presenters or topics for West Side. Does anyone would anyone like to step up to the plate? and say they are willing to give a presentation for West Side. You can pick any month you want for the rest of the year, except for July. Why July? Did you... No meeting in July. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, nobody has decided they're going to step forward, so I'll just keep plunging away on West Side. That being said, Thanks, everyone, for attending tonight's meeting, and I'm going to disengage. Stop the recording. Record